If you've been paying attention to the news and tech, you may have heard all the buzz surrounding Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. A new artificial intelligence technology that's taking the industry, heck, even the world by storm. From holding a conversation on any topic, to writing your term paper, and even teaching you new things, ChatGPT is coming the go-to resource for those looking to dive into programming, and tech professionals are raving about how ChatGPT cuts their workload in half. Now, can this technology really replace a decent programmer? In a simple answer, no. But it will make coders of all skill levels many times more efficient. So why does this matter for smart home and IoT projects? Say you're working on a hardware project and you finally have all the parts soldered and in place. But now you have to sit down and write a bunch of code to get it all working. So you spend hours and hours trying to cram together different code examples to get a working prototype. But you encounter error after error. Well, in today's video, I'll show you how ChatGPT can be used to speed up the software development process for your embedded projects. We will also be demonstrating some practical applications with the help of this little device from Seed Studio. Sound like fun? Let's get started. So quickly, let me wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. I wanted to get a fun project video out before the Christmas break, so if it is something you are interested in, hopefully you'll have some time over the break to get it done. But this is not my last video of the year, I have one more coming out next week. And a quick apology for the poor video quality, my main camera broke and I'm using a backup camera. That's why you're seeing the weird flickers here in the background. So at the end of 2021, I was lucky enough to receive a Wio terminal device from Seed Studio. I was thrilled to receive this offer because I've used their products in the past and have always been impressed with the quality and innovation in their gear. Once I got my hands on the wheel terminal, I couldn't wait to start experimenting with it. However, as I played around with the device, I really found it difficult to come up with the perfect project idea for it. It seemed like a waste to just throw a sensor on it and not use all the features. So it ended up back in my project drawer for a later date, which if you know anyone with ADHD, that's where things go to die. But thankfully, Seed Studio reached out and gave me a little prod and took, brought me back on track. So as I was planning this video, a major event occurred in the tech industry, the release of ChatGPT. Now being an engineer, we always try to look for the most efficient way of doing things. Since I hadn't worked with Arduino in a while, I decided to let ChatGPT take a swing at writing the code for me. So I decided to play around some sensors I had lying around and see if I could make a useful little IoT sensor and display. After playing with the AI for a little while, I realized that the most powerful use for it isn't just to let it do all the work for you, but to work side by side with it in order to come out with a better final product. Now I know this is gonna be a longer video, but I do have chapters in the description if you need to go back and watch some things. So make sure you watch it to the end so you can see how to use this technology to learn and improve as a coder. But first, let's take a look at the features of this powerful little dev board. The Wheel Terminal is a compact, powerful, and feature-rich device that can be used in a variety of applications. This includes IoT smart home, robotics, and prototyping. It's designed to be easy to use and provide a wide range of capabilities. Now, the Wheel Terminal has a 2.4 inch TFT LCD display with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels. This display can be used for text, images, and video, and can be even used to create interactive user interfaces. For horsepower, the Wheel Terminal is powered by an Atomel SAM D51 microcontroller, which is a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 processor. This processor is capable of running at speeds of up to 120 megahertz, providing plenty of power for even the most demanding applications. Now, just as a side note, because this is not an ESP-based device, you cannot use it with ESP Home. Trust me, if you look at the GitHub issues list, you'll see it's been asked numerous times and the dev has said no. But hopefully if the platform becomes popular enough, they will adapt the software to work with it. Now for memory, the Wheel Terminal has 512 kilobytes of flash memory and 192 kilobytes of SRAM. It also has a micro SD card slot for expandable storage. Now of course, this would not be an IoT device without connectivity. So it's equipped with a Realtek chipset providing Wi-Fi and BLE 5.0. The Wii U has a variety of input and output options, including a built-in microphone, a speaker, as well as a three-axis accelerometer, a light sensor, there's also three programmable buttons on the top, and a four-way joystick on the front. It also has a number of digital and analog input and output pins which can be used to connect a wide range of sensors and actuators. On the bottom are the two Grove connectors, which are compatible with a number of Grove sensors. These sensors can be easily connected over the four-pin bus for quick and easy prototyping. Now, if you don't want to use the Grove system, you can use the pinout to connect your own custom devices, which is actually what we're going to be doing today. If you flip it onto the back, you'll notice the 40-pin connector that directly interfaces with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO interface. So this means that you can use the Wii Terminal as a hat for a project that might need a display or some additional sensors. Of course, you can use this header for non-Pi projects as it also has a detailed pinout. Now, the main interface is the USB-C port on the bottom. This can provide power and data communication. The wheel terminal can also run in the USB OTG or on the go mode, so you can connect devices like a mouse or keyboard to it. The wheel terminal is also compatible with a wide range of development platforms and programming languages, including Arduino, CircuitPython, and MicroPython. This makes it easy to use and allows developers to choose the platform and language that best suits their needs. 
Now the part I think I love the most is the documentation and basically the class that's included for the Wii U. Seed Studio has done a great job of building an entire course around the product. All the way from getting started with a simple project up to full blown projects. You can see all of these courses at seedstudio.com or go to the link here below. That's it for a quick overview of the features of the Wii U terminal. Now let's look at how to get it set up and start developing projects on it. So for today's project, I decided to mix some of the built-in features of the Wii U terminal with some additional hardware that I had laying around. So we're gonna be using some of the built-in features like the light sensor, microphone, speaker, and display. And then I'm gonna add one of these DHT22 humidity and temperature sensors. I'd also been playing around with a Dallas one wire temperature sensor, but I ran into a few problems with it. Now, if you wanted to play with a DHT sensor, but didn't wanna go through all the trouble of wiring it up, they do sell a Grove compatible sensor that plugs right in. Now, if you're gonna be using one of these standard sensors, you're gonna need some terminals. Alternatively, I've linked some of the compatible terminals and extension wires that directly connect to the Grove connection in the kit and the link below in the description. Now for the wiring diagram, it couldn't be easier, but I provided one here on screen and in the blog post. Now, if you have one of the four pin DHT sensors, which is the most common, you just connect pin one of the DHT to the VCC pin on the rightmost Grove connector. It's pin three. Then connect pin four from the DHT to pin four on the connector and pin two on the DHT to pin one on the Grove connector. This is actually the digital input D0. If you have the three wire version, pin one is data, pin two is VCC, and pin three is ground. All right, so let's head over to the computer and get our development environment set up so we can start building our IoT project. So next we're gonna go ahead and set up our development environment, which means we need to download and install Arduino IDE and then set up the libraries and board templates. Now I've got all of this laid out in a blog post that should be coming out right after Christmas. You can find a link to it here in the description below. And what I've basically done is consolidated a lot of the instructions that I found online and into a single article. A lot of this is adapted from Seed Studios development documentation. So the first thing we need to do is hop over and grab the Arduino IDE. So just select the platform. I'm on Windows 10, so click that and then click just download. Once that's finished downloading, go ahead and open it up and install it. This should take a few minutes and you will see a few pop-ups on Windows because they, it is installing some drivers. So now that Arduino is set up and running, let's go ahead and install the correct board libraries so we can ensure our Wii terminal is recognized. So to do that, we need to grab the link out of the next step of instructions. We'll go to File, Preferences, and then here under Additional Boards Manager, we wanna paste that link in. It should end with a .json. Click OK, then click on the Board Manager, which is this icon right here, and we're gonna search for Wio Terminal. So we're gonna install the Seed SAMD Boards by Seed Studios, which is currently installed for me, but you just go and click Install, and it'll quickly get it installed for you. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and grab some libraries. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna search for Seed, and we wanna make sure to install the Seed Arduino RPC Wi-Fi, and go ahead and install the Seed Arduino Sketchbook so you have some examples if you'd like to play with those in the future. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and connect our Wii terminal to our computer using a USB-C cable. Now be aware, some USB-C cables are power only, so please try to use the one that came with the kit or one that you know is a good data cable. Once it's connected, it should show up here on a Zacom port or a dev port if you're on Mac or Linux. So we can go ahead and select that, and now it knows you wanna use the Wii terminal. Now when you get a Wii terminal out of the box, you actually can't use the Wi-Fi. You need to go ahead and flash the Realtek firmware in order to enable the Wi-Fi chip. So now we're gonna to go to the GitHub page that's linked at the first part of this section. And then in the top corner, we're gonna click code and download zip. This is gonna download the entire zip file of the repository. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and unzip or extract the folder. Then we're gonna go ahead and open up PowerShell. And on Windows 11, this is actually Windows Terminal, which does run PowerShell underneath of it. But make sure you run it as an administrator. So to do that, you just click the start button and type in PowerShell and then right click on it and run it as administrator. Now there is a cool little piece of software you can install called gsudo for Windows, which works very similar to the Linux sudo, where you just initiate the command and it will go ahead and ask for admin privileges. So now that we're in PowerShell, let's navigate to our downloads folder. And then we wanna to go to the ambd flash tool master. And then in here, we have an exe file called amdb flash tool.exe. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. So we're gonna run amdb underscore flash underscore, underscore tool.exe and then space flash. This is gonna grab the latest version of the firmware and flash it. And once it's done, you are gonna notice a message up on the wheel. That just indicates that it has loaded the special Arduino application on there that will flash the firmware. This will actually stay on here even after you finish flashing. So don't be afraid. That just means that the flash software has been installed or is being installed. Once the command prompt tells you everything's good to go, then you can flash any other Arduino program and it will clear that off the screen. So the flashing is done and our wheel terminal is ready to go. So let's hop over to ChatGPT, get that set up, and I'll show you how to use it to build out your programs. 
So now for the fun part, let's head over to chat.openai.com slash chat. Now this is the chat GPT interface. You will need to either create an account or log in with your Google account. And they've recently updated it on the 15th of December to actually store your entire history of all of your chats. So you can actually log in from multiple computers, jump in and resume where you were and a conversation with the chatbot. So that's pretty cool. But to get started, we're gonna go ahead and create a fresh thread. So I'm gonna go and delete the thread I was using last night and we're gonna go ahead and new chat. Now the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is ensure that we have our hardware hooked up correctly. So we're gonna ask the chatbot to generate us an Arduino code that will allow us to use the DHT22 sensor with our WIO terminal. Again, if you're using the DTH11, just modify the way you're asking the chatbot. And don't worry, if you make a mistake, you can always ask the chatbot to correct it. And so one of the really neat things about this is it will actually tell you what to do in instructions. So at the top here you see it's telling us we need to install the DTH library in our Arduino IDE. So while we're waiting for this to finish up the code, let's go ahead and pop back over into Arduino IDE and get that installed. So we'll go to our library and search for DHT. And you wanna install the DHT sensor library by Adafruit. Again, I've already got that installed. So we'll tab back over here and it's gonna output this to the serial port, which is a good way to test it. So we're gonna click copy code paste it in here and hit verify. All right, verified correctly. So we're gonna click upload. There's our output. So to see our output, we need to go up to tools and serial monitor. And there we go. Now we've got some example temperatures and humidity coming out on the serial bus. And to test this, you can always just breathe on the sensor and you should see that humidity spike up. So we know everything's working perfectly fine. Now one problem for me, I'm an American and it's coming out in Celsius, so I have no idea what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back over to chat GPTP and just tell it, please update the code to show the temperature in F. It's gonna give you a little bit of background, tell you the formula to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. We'll go ahead and just let it finish up here. And again, it knows since you're in the same thread, you can continue to ask it questions without repeating the existing question. It's just like having a conversation with somebody else, it's gonna remember where it is in the conversation and what it's given you so far. So you can just continue to ask it to change this in the following code. So now that the code example is finished, let's go ahead and click copy code, and then we're gonna paste it back into the IDE, and then verify it and upload it and see if it's working. There we go. Now it's in Fahrenheit. So the next step is, let's add in the display on the WIO terminal. So let's ask it to display the current humidity and temperature on the display of the WIO terminal. Now, one thing I have, now one thing I have noticed is it has a tendency to not use the correct library for this particular display. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to please use the TFT underscore e spy dot h library and it should automatically correct itself then for the display. So that's one thing you need to make sure you do is that you're actually checking that it's giving you the correct information. There have been opportunities that I've seen where it's actually given me completely false information. It's given me information that it's either made up or it's found on some forum somewhere. So just be careful. You'll have to check it as you go along. That's why I said this is more of a companion to ask questions to than somebody you can just rely on to throw a question at and get code back from. One thing to note is sometimes when you do access the chatbot, it will show that it is currently very busy because it is a fairly new and fairly popular platform. So make sure if you do see something weird, refresh the page, try again a little later, you may just have to pick a less busy time to use it. I found problems where it will stop output in the middle or it won't answer questions at all. So if you run into problems, just refresh the browser or try again at a later time. All right, so there's our finished code. Let's go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna paste it in here and go ahead and run it. Now, if we look over here at the screen, we'll see it displaying the temperature and humidity on the screen of the WIO terminal. All right, simple as that. Now, let's move on to something a little more complicated. Let's go ahead and ask it to set up Wi-Fi and MQTT. All right, so now I've asked it, can you add the ability to connect to Wi-Fi using the Wi-Fi.h library? Again, because I've done this before, I know it's gonna try to use the wrong library sometimes, so I wanna make sure it uses the correct one. And send the temperature and humidity to an MQTT broker. Please use the MQTT.h library, okay? So right here, I've noticed one small problem is that I have to use authentication for my MQTT server. So once it finishes the script, I'll go ahead and ask it to add authentication for MQTT. So I've asked it to go ahead and add the ability to authenticate to the MQTT broker. So it's gonna go ahead and add those lines in here in addition. Now you'll have to go through here and update your SSID and password for your Wi-Fi. You'll also need to change your MQTT's broker IP address, your username, your password, 
in whatever topic you want it to go to. So for right now, we're just gonna have it output to this generic sensors slash DHT22. All right, now that we've added that information there, let's go ahead and compile it and test it to make sure it's working. Now this is gonna take, this is gonna take a little bit longer to compile because it does have more libraries involved. And one thing to note is you will need to go in and add in the MQTT library by clicking on the libraries and searching for it. Again, just like the rest of them. Now it does look like it's actually dropped the screen. So it's no longer adding in information about the screen. While we're testing, we'll have it update the code. I'm gonna pop back over here. So it's finished. Let's go to tools and serial monitor. So it's saying that it's publishing data outside of the MQTT broker. So let's pop open our MQTT Explorer and see if it's actually updating. And if we look right here under sensors, we'll see DHT 22 temperature, 71 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity 34.4. So again, I can blow into it and that should start going up. Now it says 99. So now we have a functional IoT project. So this will output to our MQTT broker, which then we can pick up in Home Assistant and display with, with whatever you want. But let's add a few more elements to this. So while it finishes up the, the last code addition I ask it to make, let's go ahead and click here and we'll do, we'll say, so please output the light sensor and microphone level to both the display and MQTT. Let's go ahead and add, it, add those two additional items. One thing I did notice is it doesn't seem to be calling for the correct pins. It thinks you're bringing in an external light sensor and an, and an external microphone. So we need to grab those out of the documentation. So if you click over here, we go to light sensor. It's using the pin, it's called wheel light. And then for the microphone, it's using the pin called wheel mic. So these are aliases that we can use in our own code. So one thing you might notice here is it's gone through and it's all of a sudden stopped. You don't see the rest of the code. So I ended up asking the chatbot to tell me to output the full code 50 lines at a time. After you output the first 50 lines, please ask me to continue. If I respond yes, then I'll output the next 50 lines. And it basically output it 50 lines at a time, approximately. So you take each of the sections, pasted it in here, and we went ahead and uploaded it. But if I pop over to my MQTT Explorer, we'll see the DTH 22, the temperature, humidity, light, and microphone are all being output simultaneously. So as I picked it up, you see it spikes. It picks, it starts, the light sensor gets higher, the microphone gets louder as I talk into it. So now I've got it under my lights. So as you can see, the light sensor is working. So everything seems working fine. It's transmitting the data. Only problem right now is we have it as one single line instead of individual sensors. So we're gonna ask it to break that into different pieces. So I'm telling it to output the MQTTs, different topics, not as a single line. Please output only the change lines. So we just need to replace this string here. So we're gonna change this into different payload strings. Now it did modify the code just a little bit. So it actually hard coded in the topic instead of having them use the one at the top here. So now instead of using the variable, it's hard coded in, which is fine for our example, but you might want to have it update that later on. So let's go ahead and test it. All right, so it's done. It's uploading to our MQTT broker. So let's pop back over here. And now instead of the DTH22, it's outputting as WIO terminal and we'll see we have temperature, humidity, light, and microphone. Obviously the next step we want to do is remove this additional header here, which we can probably do that ourselves. So all you gotta do is just change the payload strings right here. We'll just dump those out. So just remove the headers here. And of course, we probably wanna re remove the suffix here as well. So this just gives us raw data that we can interpret in Home Assistant. All right, and now our data is coming out as numbers instead of strings. So now we can easily build something in Home Assistant to interpret this data. All right, so now we have a valid output that we could take into Home Assistant. Obviously, from here, we can make the screen much prettier. So look on screen, we're also getting the data just in a simple output. Now, obviously, we can continue working with the chatbot to ask it to do more things, make the output prettier, give us multiple screens, even retrieve data from an MQTT broker. But now, you've got the basics set up and ready to go. There's still quite a few bugs that need to be worked out with the ChatGPT team, but hopefully, this tool gets nothing but better. Right now, it's extremely useful. Hopefully here in the near future, it's indispensable. Again, I wanna thank Seed Studio for sending me one of their devices to try out. As always, if you wanna pick one of those up, you can find it down in the description below. These are infinitely valuable little tools that you can use when you're developing something. You can build a nice little room controller if you wanted with it. It's pretty flexible. And for $46, isn't that much worse than a couple of Arduinos. So again, if you're interested, check out the links in the description. Now, if you do run into any problems, I'll be happy to give you whatever help I can by either putting something in the comments below or going to our Discord server. Feel free to join the Discord server. That's pretty easy. It's usually me answering questions anyway. So you can just jump on there, find the topic that's relevant and ask a question. Now, if you're interested in seeing more of my project videos, you can click on the playlist right here. And as always, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel by clicking the logo right here. Thanks for sticking out to the end of the video. Merry Christmas and happy holidays.